We are we are live. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Viva Cafe con Leche. I am Lori Monaco, the badass Buddha. I am a life coach specializing in transformation and mindfulness practice. My business, Align Yourself Inc. I am also a holistic practitioner and uh, <laughs> I am a speaker. And I got distracted because the we always thing so anyway welcome i'm glad you're here this morning and my beautiful host hola mi gente buenos dias namaste aquí es con la margarita uh spiritual and creative healing life coach and i'm so I, i've been so in love with that really i have um author writer artist I love my artwork. Uh, and I'm coming to you from Tampa, Florida by way of Bridgeport, Connecticut. So welcome. The gladiator guru welcomes you along with the badass Buddha. Make sure you leave your comment as to where you're from. A selfie with your taza de cafe, por favor. And let's enjoy this show. What are you drinking this morning? Anything different? Uh, no, just Bustelo. I really haven't been out. Um, me, I totally have a problem with this mandate of wearing the mask everywhere you go. Um, so I have my regular Cafe Bustelo for now um, with evaporated coconut milk. It is so delicious. You got to try it. Um, and this is a double shot this morning of my cafe just to wake up and enjoy it i i slept good and was excited for this morning show and here we are with um my morning orgasm you seem a little to have that orgasm this morning though you need to, you need to get some uh Real excited, or, or you've already had it, and it's that compensatory relaxation. This is, this is the mellow, the mellow effect after the fact, huh? I have my 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 big lady cup, which is not representative of my body anymore because I've lost so much weight. <laughs> yes, the curves Stand are up. there. Show us the curves are there. Well, I so I've lost now. Um, let me see. I'm weak, about a little over into the second phase of the program and um i'm down three more pounds so i'm closing in so i i'm at about 162 now i was 165 um when we finished the first six week course and i have not i the last time i was 159 that was the, the smallest i was was after i got sick i right before i did a a big uh a big show at the Marriott or whatever workshop and uh, I was sick for the few days before so I had a fever so I didn't really eat that much so I was down to 159 for like about a minute but then after that I you know I put the weight back on a little bit so I hovered around like the mid 160s but my my big weight my big piece is going to be when I hit 158 because I have not been 158 in 20 years I have not been under 159 in 20 years. So wow. That 158, which is not that far away, but it's like, it's close, but it's so far. When I hit that 158 mark, I'm going to celebrate. Even though I, my, my goal weight is 145, I'm going to celebrate because 20, I mean, 20 years, that's like a whole person. That's mm -hmm. a whole person's age. And I- A whole adult. <laughs> what, what'd you say? I'm sorry. You that's say? a whole adult. Yeah, that's what I mean. And I, I can't believe I've been that thin and that long. Like, it's just dumbfounding to me that I let myself go for so many years. And so it's a great segue into our conversation, which we'll, st we'll talk about in a moment, because I, I want you to do your, your Tuesday uh, presentation piece. But, um, because there's always this myth about perimenopause, and after a certain age, you cannot lose weight. So we're going to dispel a lot of those myths today when we have our conversation. Um, so anyway, but before we get started, Tuesdays are usually our conversation about what coffee means, and it is the beautiful poet that is my my 
partner here that <laughs> shares the, her, her unbelievable words about coffee and all that stuff. Well, um, coffee is life. It's just like movimiento for the coffee lovers out there. Your day can't begin without a fresh pot of food coffee. If I go out to a diner or something and I ask for a cup of coffee, I ask them to brew me a fresh pot and that I would wait. Um, some of them look at me like I'm retarded and other ones say, oh, it was just brewed and they bring me the cup. And I said, no, man, no. Have a fresh brewed cup of coffee. Yeah. Because That's to me, um, it, coffee is just that. It has to be fresh and it has to be you know, uh, caressing my palate. When when I just when the first drop hits my tongue, it has to caress it like a warm blanket in the winter, you know, like a a nice breeze on a summer night. Coffee is that that melancholy and that nostalgia. So it has to be like the perfect cup of coffee. You can't just go to Dunkin' Donuts and say you're a coffee lover. And I'm I have no apologies for Dunkin' Donut lovers. Um, you you can't just you can't substitute a cup of cafe con leche especially not your first cup of the day it has to be done with intention it has to be that that welcoming cup right after that meaningful grateful prayer it's just that it's life and for those who can't associate a great cup of coffee made with love first thing in the morning to just sip it in and let it just go and that you feel it my first sip my coffee always has to be very hot i feel it going all the way down into my stomach i'm like whoo that's why i call it my orgasmic morning so yes coffee like music like God, his life, it's to me, it's, it's just, it's part of something that sets my day and you set it with intention and you sit it with your first cup. My favorite time is to be up at six, brew my coffee, sit back here, watch the sunrise as I'm praying and meditating to just have clarity and direction for my day. That's what that cup of coffee. And I, well, can't, I can't wait because I, I, one of my favorite things to do with coffee in the morning is when I go on vacation to be able to sit quietly by myself in a different place and do exactly that as well. And um, for those of you that live in, or live in the Northeast, you know that we got hit with the tropical storm last week, which is why we were brought, I was broadcasting for my car just to get a signal and, and uh, Margie was hosting that day. So uh, we didn't get our power back on in southern, southwestern Connecticut. We didn't get our power back on until Sunday morning. And internet didn't come back on until like late Saturday night. So, and some people still don't have it on. It's really crazy. So I postponed my vacation. Um, so instead of being in Maine, which I've been broadcasting from this morning, I'm going to be in Maine on Wednesday. And I'm going to be broadcasting on Thursday in Maine. So I cannot wait. To, on Thursday morning to wake up and have my cup of coffee, like sitting outside. I, I have to see what the signal's like. I'm hoping to be able to broadcast outside. If not, it'll have to be inside the, uh, the hotel, but um, I'm, I can't wait. Like I cannot wait to just be drinking that coffee somewhere else and get some new coffee. I'm excited about that. And that's hard because I tell you, when I traveled through Spain, I drank coffee like it was water. In every village I passed through each day, I would have a cafe con leche. And it wasn't until the 33rd day of my journey through Spain that I actually made it to Santiago de Compostela that I, I found down, down the, the cobblestone street from my hostel. I sat there and it was the best cup of coffee that I tasted throughout Spain. So it is, it's, it's just something that it tastes better when you're somewhere you love, somewhere that's different and beautiful and inviting. So I, I hope you do find that great cup of coffee while you're away. Um, I want to shout out to Janine, my Aunt Dali, and Diane, welcome to Viva. 
And who do I have on my end? So Karen Marie is on. Good morning, Karen Marie. She, um, she said, I'm so sorry you didn't have power. Oh, yeah, thanks, Karen Marie. Me too. I think I had the generator, but it only powers half the house. So it didn't power the uh, hot water heater, which I really hate cold showers, so that was interesting. And, and the air conditioner. So that was, uh, that was challenging as well. Um, Carmen Grandiva on. Good morning, Carmen. And um, yeah, I'm, I know I'll find a good cup of coffee. I'm, I'm actually in search of buying several bags while I'm away because we have to pass through New Hampshire, um, even Massachusetts. So I'm actually going to stop a couple of places and just pick up some bags of coffee and then try them out on the, uh, you know, on the, for the show. But anyway, so yeah, so that, so this is, make sure you, you take a picture of your, yourself with your mug and, you know, we're still doing that. We're still working out the kinks of what we're putting together to send to you. I know it's taken a long time, so you will get stuff. But yeah, just bear with us because the end yeah. result would be phenomenal. Um, and also on today's subject, I just want to say, you say Carmen Grandiva because I don't have my cousin on mine. Hola, prima. So she must be Good being morning, she said, She's not my watch party. So welcome. Um, if you were going to be um, talking about a subject that we are all familiar with. So please chime in. Give us, you know, your thoughts on it your facts on it um let's just do this 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 thread let's continue the thread on this information because it'll serve us all um all that are watching and all that will watch later because it, it is a subject close to the women's heart so please give chime in give us your facts if you're if you know some facts on it your personal experience with it um because any information that you think might be just for you might help someone else out Right. And this week we're creating it. It didn't purposely fall this way. Well, I guess we planned it this way, but it wasn't like a plan that we say we're going to do age week this week, but it just happens to work out that way. So today's conversation between myself and Margarita is uh, PMS versus menopause and also perimenopause. But on Thursday, we're going to have one of our, you know, most popular guests come on FIM and we're going to talk about what is age. And we're going to talk about redefining things and defying age in general, because, uh, you know, we have a different attitude towards that these days. Um, some of the old stuff's still there, but also that's the same with PMS versus uh, PMS, menopause and perimenopause. I, I, we both had conversations on this when we were discussing, you know, the idea of putting this up as a show. And there's still so many myths. There's still so much misinformation out there and and it's just a so it's socially it, it it like germinates socially and it perpetuates socially which we're going to dispel a lot of dispel we're going to dispel a lot of that stuff today because um women you know lady you know you need to empower yourself it, it, your attitude is the big thing your mindset is the big thing and while hormones do control so so much of our our physiological uh, body, but you have control over certain things, and we're going to give you, we're going to talk about it, and we're going to talk about the myths, but we're also going to talk, we're going to share our stories, we're going to give suggestions on how to empower yourself, and what you can do to sort of alleviate symptoms. So this is, uh, Margie's right, this is going to be a very, very good show. Please share it with as many women as you know share it like don't i don't even like hesitate let them decide if they want to watch it but this is going to be a really good show so let's just jump right in what do you think margie because we've got yes, a really great absolutely. um Edith's watching too Hola, Edith. said good morning bellas i love this chicas bellas i'm all that's all i'm good with that i'll go with that all right, yes, and remember uh, one of the in, in, in intentions we want you to say <clears throat> is gratitude and surround yourself and just soak in the beauty, the beauty of nature, which will never fail us. Not even on our worst day, you walk outside and God is going to be showing you the beauty that possesses our surroundings that we take for granted. You know, hug a tree, 
walk barefoot, be grounded, feel mother nature under your toes. And we remember that it's the simple stuff in life that fill us with so much joy. So that just, I needed to say that I'm looking out at my yard and I'm like, I got to go out there today. So put your feet but, around barefoot. I love yes, that. Yes. And be grounded and just remember that, you know, in, in every beginning that we have, we start new, which means we start from nothing and we build on faith and we build on hope until we accomplish our goals. And sometimes we think that our basket needs to have all the eggs in it before we can launch forward into something. And the only thing you need to have is faith that you are going to make it and the hope that whatever obstacle comes your way, you're going to jump over that bitch and make it happen. So right. it's totally up to you, but it's just a simple reminder to walk outside and just breathe in all the beauty around you because it's always there. You just don't look. Edivia Martinez Domina is on. Buenos dias. Are these your people that usually go on uh, your watch party or not? Yeah, what is it? Who is it? Edivia. Oh, Edivia from Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. She's live from Puerto Rico. Hola, Edivia. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. So, I mean, because I, I, as Lori and I, we do this together, but we also are doing um, separate things and sometimes life gets in the way. And that's why I just felt the need to, to remind myself as well as I'm looking out into my yard that, you know, when it's raining, don't look at it as, oh, it's raining again. You know, yesterday I walked outside, outside my, my back door and I just let the rain fall on me. And then, yeah, it might be uncomfortable at first, but it's beautiful. And sometimes we just need to wash away the fears. We just need to go outside, put our feet in the dirt and focus on that instead of what we think is going wrong. Because sometimes what we think is going wrong is actually the universe and God connecting the dots for us. So stay, stay awake, stay alert and stay grateful. Yes. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, my dear. So um, we're going to sort of split this up and we're going to have comments on both sides, but uh, Margie's going to start the conversation talking about PMS. Then we're going to move into perimenopause and menopause. So what have you got for us with PMS? Okay. T P for PMS, I have um, 10 symptoms that I think it's across the board. One is fatigue. Two is that beautiful thing called moodiness. That breasts enlargement bitchiness you mean yes <laughs> breast tenderness you get acne food cravings you suffer depression you have abdominal cramps some suffer migraines and the favorite of all is the bloating <laughs> so everybody needs those period panties and those period outfits just to hide or the bloat, because the bloat doesn't always necessarily just end in your stomach area. You just feel bloated or over, which then causes more moodiness. And to me, when I used to get my period, I knew it like two weeks in advance because my breast started getting tender. Um, I, I, it wasn't so much um, the moodiness of being aggravated at everything it was just this weird sensation of sadness i felt sad and sensitive like everything bothered me if somebody said something i just took it as though i was just like this pathetic victim or something i was like what the hell's wrong food cravings the only thing i craved during my period were Reese cups um <clears throat> but my symptoms were two weeks in advance so fatigue, I don't remember if I ever felt, oh, yes, I did, because I would fall asleep like a crackhead. Just I would sit down for a minute, and, <laughs> and I remember most of this was when I was taking care of Eric, because it was when I was taking <clears throat> in the latter part of my five and a half years as his caregiver <clears throat> is when perimenopause decided to hang out with me. But like for the first part, I would sit down just to have a conversation with him. And that was it. I was out. 
I would just fall asleep no matter which way. Like the kids do in the car and their heads are retarded and you're wondering if they're going to break their neck, that sort of thing. Um, my breasts always were very tender during all that. Um, I, as far as cramps, I got like um, <clears throat> an, an annoying like vibrational cramps, but not actual cramps that would happen like, oh my God. Really? Even DMS during it, you didn't get cramps? No, not before. After. Oh, they were like cramps. Very they, were, lucky. <laughs> they, they were like um, very subtle. Like you felt like, oh, what's that type of thing? And a soreness, but never like cramps. Like I hear other people saying they get cramps. Oh, yeah. And when never I, got migraines. And I'm always bloated, so I can't even blame that on PMS. Uh, <laughs> You know, with, with age, which we'll talk on Thursday, but it's also where you start learning all these um, allergies you have to foods that you've enjoyed all your life. But now that you're older, your body is showing them up more, you know, like I can't even have well, sex in my food anymore. Well, we're going to talk about that because it, food has a lot to do with all of this. And a lot of people do not realize that. A lot of women don't realize that. And a lot of women don't want to admit that either because... You know, when we say we cut food out because it actually is more problematic to our systems, um, most people, men or women, doesn't matter. They don't want to. They don't want to do it. They don't want to hear it because they don't want to sacrifice that. So, um, even like what you said that you get allergies as you go, that most likely you had the allergy to it when you were younger, or you built it up when you were younger, and yes, you can get it later but it comes out later sometimes. It's just like things you could be allergic to when you're younger and then you're not when you're older. It just, your body just gets used to it. But yeah, that's, we'll, we'll get into that as well. So yeah, keep going with that. <clears throat> yeah, so during my, when I used to get my period, I, I knew at, at those seven days, because I was a seven dayer, um, <clears throat> I could not eat pasta. <clears throat> that, that would be like a sleeping pill for me. Oh. And then I didn't get it as much as uh, others that I knew would get it, but <clears throat> <clears throat> sorry, um, acne, people would get a pimple here and they're like, and then that would be their telltale. Oh shit. I'm about to get my period. You yeah. know? So like we all know our body and sometimes we wouldn't be um, able to describe it to one another, uh, but we know it. We just never put it into words because who's going to talk about getting their period all the time. Right. Yeah, it's interesting. Women talk about a lot of things, but there's certain things that, like, we'll joke about our periods. We'll talk about very vaguely about our periods, but we don't talk about the details of our periods. And it's interesting because when I was teaching for really, for years, we had a, uh, I taught a pathology class where we talked about PMS, we talked about perimenopause and menopause. And um, we talked about endometriosis. And endometriosis is a condition where um, the... You, you develop um, the lining on the inside of the uterus is, is normally a, it's a specific cell type, but it's found in other places in your body and it increases when your hormones kick in it, it like causes problems. Um, so it, it, what it does is it like enhances most people's, most women's periods. And women don't realize that there is a normal and an abnormal flow. There's also like normal and abnormal thing. And there's women that go on for years with things like endometriosis um, or ovarian cysts that they don't know that that's not normal because their mother had it that way or their sister had it that way, which is, it can often be inherited. So, um, but anyway, I, I, we're going like off subject. So, but yeah, the PMS stuff, I mean, I was the same way. I would get the pimple here and there, the mood swings. My, my, my patients would like mid-month, like right after my period stopped and then up to the mid-month, my patients were fabulous. And from the mid-month on, it would start to decline. So my patients would get shorter and shorter and shorter until I was like just a few days before I was going to start again. And I was either angry, you know, uh, sad, back and forth, salt and sugar cravings. Um, and it was just awful. It was just very annoying. Um, I didn't like myself because I couldn't control it. Like I, I would feel myself coming, getting angry about something that was so stupid, but I couldn't stop myself. Like really couldn't stop myself. 
Well, you know, now that you say that about the emotional stuff, um, with PMS and as I'll go into perimenopause, I'm gonna tell you for those that are going through it, Nancy Green says that in 2015, she became allergic to 30 food items. Wow. That is sad, Nancy. Very sad. <clears throat> but we can't control our mood swings, but we can control our environment to it <clears throat> with essential oils. I'm a true believer in pure organic essential oils. So when I knew I was about to get my period, I normally in my house um, throughout the day, in the first thing in the morning for one hour, I would burn, um, burn. <clears throat> in my thing with the wax, melted wax, I would get, at that time I was making my own with no scent. Um, I would pour them uh, eucalyptus oil for one hour every morning it would clean out the air in my house so you think better there's no germs or bacteria in it then i would do lemongrass but during my period i would burn <clears throat> lavender and or frankincense with myrrh and lavender yeah, and just so breathing bad. that in it like like it did something like I didn't feel as agitated as I normally would. And I learned that towards the latter part <laughs> when I was making organic products. But if you feel that you're in that part, hola Carmen, um, if you're in this, this process that we're talking about, look into that. And it, it, to me, it has to be 100% pure um, essential oils, but that does help with the PMS. Even in the migraines, you take peppermint, and you rub it on your temples. You take Vicks and you put it on that pimple once you're starting to get it. So when you're flowing through your period, it doesn't get worse. The Vicks dries it out. I'm all for <clears throat> home and holistic um, remedies because they've worked because I'm a witness that they work. So yes, so we're all gonna go through this. Some are gonna go through it worse than others. Um, for me, the PMS, uh, wasn't so bad. I never got it on the same day every month like other people got it. Either I got it three weeks or five weeks. It was never always on the same time. So I would get it, 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 you know, so yeah, I would have it three weeks after the one I had two months ago or I have it five weeks later. So everybody's body is different. You just got to take time out to learn it. So PMS for me, my regular periods was not so bad perimenopause that was a war with that bitch so before you get into perimenopause let's just say that the reason that we um first of all for years doctors used to say that um when women would report per, uh, pms they would say oh you know you're just being oversensitive you're it's it's your emotions and your, they, it's all in your head, which in a way it kind of is when you have those chemicals rushing through. Because the hormones also, there's receptors all over your body for these hormones, including your brain. And, and then they in turn will stimulate brain chemicals. So that's where you get all the moodiness and all that like crazy stuff. Um, and so it, it, in a way they were right, but what they were doing though was brushing it off, just basically saying, oh, women, you know, you're just sensitive like that until they really did the research on it and found that PMS really was true and that female hormones, because what happens is they go up and then they go down. If you don't get pregnant, then they crash. And it was this up and down, which causes all these shifts and changes. And for some women, it's very high, um, lift up, you know, they go very high and then they dip very low. And that's what, what where people go crazy like they some women really feel like they're losing it i mean that they and, and it's very real and so there are ways to control it and what we're gonna do, we'll talk about it towards the end because the same things that you can apply to perimenopause and menopause as far as um tips that we can give you to help alleviate the symptoms or deal with the symptoms can be applied to to women that have pms as well you know so so we'll hold all those off till till the end you know but one of the things that that margie touched on that was really key i was going to say essential but it's, she was talking about the essential oils <laughs> the, the fact that she was she was using natural products and she was using aroma to, uh, stimulants you know aromatherapy stimulants 
And for some people, they are very therapeutic. They can really stimulate some positive, uh, you know, chemical releases in the, in the brain and throughout the body. But she said something very, you know, specific that it has to be natural. Like you cannot use synthetics because, and you have to be really careful because some people will sell essential oils, but they have synthetic stuff in it. Synthetic stuff will sometimes mimic um, chemicals that are associated with our own biochemicals that might make things like that far worse. So you always want to make sure that you're not breathing in that synthetic stuff. So essential oils is key. You know, lavender might work for some people, might not work for other people. So you play around with it, you know, and you see which ones make you feel better. Like one of the essential oils I always worked with that made me feel good was lemon. Anything that had like a lemon scent to it or citrus scent to it seemed to always make me feel a lot better. Um, so again, now we're going to sort of, we'll talk about that more, you know, towards the end. So let's talk about perimenopause going into menopause because most people think that most women believe that menopause is perimenopause. Like they'll, they'll use those, those terms interchangeably, but perimenopause is the stage between, you know, having your period regularly or regular menses and then not having it anymore. And it's the back and forth. And perimenopause is actually the worst part about it. That is where, that is where the typical symptoms that are associated with menopause are actually coming in. And on top of it, you're also dealing with PMS uh, symptoms because you're going back and forth. So some may be still dealing with having a period, but not as you know regularly as you have it, or it would come on. It'll come on for like two weeks at a time. So it's all over the place. So you get your PMS. Then you also get your, your menopause symptoms. So do you want me to talk about that? Do you want, do you want to share some stories about that? Because I know you've had some stories on your perimenopause, and I'm in perimenopause right now. Well, I, I, I would have preferred to have gone from having a period straight to menopause. Um, perimenopause yes. to me was very destructive to my spirit, uh, to my days. It interrupted... Um, and it, it felt like it wasn't just that 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 week before the period and during it, and then as soon as it stopped, you're like, yay! It wasn't like that for me. For me, it was um, whether I was on or not. Um, it was very destructive to to my body and my spirit to the point where I wanted to rip out of my skin. Where perimenopause would make me get such severe, severe hot flashes, whether I was awake or sleeping, that uh, I just wanted to cower down in a fetal position, in a corner, and just cry as I'm ripping out of my skin. Um, and this was all happening, I guess the double whammy was when, when I was taking care of Eric, when I would have to manually pick him up out of the bed and wheelchair nine times a day and bring him back and forth and take him a shower. And he was always cold. So I had to dry him up in the shower with the curtain closed. And that just added to my inner heat that this perimenopause was causing me. Um, I could have went eight months without a period. And then I came back with a bang and I was, um, <laughs> the last time that I went eight months without a period, um, I, it came with a vengeance the night before Eric's funeral. Aww. So I'll never forget that last time. And for his funeral, I was going to wear, you know, white. I was wearing white. So I never wore a tampon in my life. I just think that, what's the purpose of that? Let it flow out. It's supposed to come out. Um, so that day, because I was wearing a white dress, I had a tampon, two pads, my panties, and a freaking girdle that I don't wear. And if Iris is on, she could, she was here with me for that time. So I didn't, I didn't sit throughout the whole funeral. One, because I had this tight ass girdle on, you on and double pad, right? And two is because I was afraid because I was bleeding so much that if I did sit, it would come out some way and I'll be walking at this funeral with blood on my white dress. So my, needless to say, with all the other emotions going on that I was burying my husband, I was in a group full of people that half of them I just did not need to look at. And then um, I'm hemorrhaging. So that was, 
Lisa says she remembers. She says, in I detail. Now, who said, Iris said? Iris said she remembers. <laughs> yes. And and I hadn't worn um, wedges the whole time I took care of, like, I, I wouldn't tell you, like, four, four and a half years, because the first year I was still dressing, like, my gypsy style. And then after that, I was like, fuck it. Um, so in as soon as we're walking away from the caskets going down, I'm taking my shoes off in the cemetery. So I'm grounding and being vibrational in cemetery dirt. And that was like the most natural thing for me to do. So that, that, so three myths that I came up with, if you want to add in, if any, anybody wants to chime in, please do. Can we do uh, shout outs before we go any further? So yes, yes. I want to let you know, cause I have a lot of people coming on that usually go on yours. So, uh, Ra Raulina Vida. Uh, she said, good morning, ladies. Howdy from Texas. Good morning. Um, and who else? Yes. So, uh, Edivia said, hola, querida, Serena, DTB. With all um, Edith says, Dios te bendiga. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, Margie, I need some uh, spray. Who said? I think some of you did so. Did you, you ever give her essential oils? Is that well, I you? make um, my very popular that DS Beauty. I've had like 10 Texas from even people here in Florida. I sold, which I'm going to start doing again, um, lemongrass misters. So you can put it on your pillow, in your house, on your body. You spray your face when you're going to go somewhere where you don't know because lemongrass is very healing. The smell of it and it on your body is also very good. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to start making those again. And good morning, Tiffany. Tiffany just jumped on. Morning, Tiffany. My daughter or your friend? Uh, Tiffany is uh, just a fan of the show in general. I, I think Tiffany comes. She said, good morning, ladies. Uh, good morning, Tiffany. I'm from the Latitude 28 family, I think, which is oh, absolutely fabulous. Good. So, um so go ahead, give us some myths on perimenopause. I'm gonna give you um I'm gonna give you three myths on perimenopause. One is a myth that you cannot get pregnant. Uh yes, you can. Um, and don't believe that because your mom's last period was at 52, that so will yours. And another is that birth control will not postpone menopause. It is coming, ladies. It is here for me. August 6th made three years that I have been in menopause. So facts about perimenopause, hot flashes. You're going to get them like you breathe. Those were horrible. <laughs> and they're weird. Hot flashes only come from like here up. They, they, they take over this part. Not saying that you can't get hot down below. It's just that generally when they hit, they hit here and you get your face get red. You get, and right, like, so when you would have the hot flashes, you told me that you wanted to rip out of your skin. I would get, I, because I, I was getting them. So I'll explain that in a minute. I'm not getting them so much anymore. I just wanted to punch somebody. Like, it, I would get so hot so fast. And, and it would just be like, oh my God, is it hot? And then, and you're, and it, your agitation level, oh my God, like, I just was so, get so angry. Like anybody who's bothering me, like just got to stop for a second because I can't deal with this right now. So Absolutely. I developed Tourette syndrome. Fuck my life. Fuck my life. So yeah, hot flashes were, and they just came You've had Tourette syndrome a long time, honey. You I know. Yeah. Well, I'm fluent in three I, I believe, I don't call, I am just trilingual. English, Spanish, profanity. That's just part of the package with me. So, and how about those night sweats during perimenopause where you wake up naked and it wasn't because you had a good night of sex. You wake up naked, you- I'm sweaty, sometimes, you had a good night of sex, yeah. Sometimes I would wake up thinking I peed the bed because that's how wet my bed was with the- Now night see, night. I didn't, I don't get those. I don't get those. My sister did. My sister would tell me about that and she would say it was, it was just awful. I've, I've been lucky enough not to get those. So not all, not, not all the symptoms are, uh, you know, applicable to everybody and not, and it depends. You might go a while with one set of symptoms and then switch to another set of symptoms or add symptoms. So keep going. Um, weight gain. 
and for us that is very easy to gain weight and somewhat semi difficult to lose it that was that was unnecessary mother nature totally unnecessary and you know what and it's kind of even though it does happen it is also an el one of the myths associated with it because we also understand that we are not yeah the body changes it's it's that transition period from going back and forth to the hormones having them there having them low having them there having them low and once you get into a cycle of the idea that oh my god i'm hungry because that's what was happening to me during my perimenopause which i mean i'm still in it it's i've, I've gone now i think it's been five months without having um menstruation which i'm counting down and uh, because by the way, you have to go 12 consecutive months without getting your period considered in menopause. So you can get all the way up to the 11th month. And then if you get it, you have to start all over again. And I had a student that that happened to her twice, twice to the 11th month and then got her period on the 12th month. So I'm crossing fingers, seven more months to go. But the, P, the, the perimenopause for me, was hot flashes, very bad food cravings, very bad moodiness. Um, I, it was like my PMS was hyped up, um, salt, sugar cravings, and for a while I started to eat like crazy. And this started to happen in the fall, so I gained a bunch of weight. Then I started to get it under control a little bit, and I sustained. And then COVID came, and I gained more weight. The cravings were really bad, and I kept blaming them on the hormones. And then. When I decided, when, when uh, uh, Margie and I decided to do this, the, this program, and we both started losing weight, we sort of proved that now she's already in menopause, I'm in perimenopause, and we discovered the idea that, you know what, if you start cutting certain things out of your diet and then stay consistent with that, you will lose weight. And I did, and I just actually, I want to, this is, this is how much weight I've and, and if anybody's saw anything beforehand nice see so i i've lost a lot and and so has margie and the thing is is that we didn't go by the standard of saying hey you know what? um we are in menopause or we're in perimenopause the hormones are screwed up we're not going to be able to wait was it easy in the beginning i mean i don't know margie how'd you feel when you start that stuff out of your diet it was a little hard for me it's not easy you know why because i um i have i had to follow something and being of a spontaneous nature and doing things my way it that was the most difficult part for me was programming my mind to to do the drops because sometimes many days I forgot to take them first thing in the morning. I just associated them with my lunch and dinner. Um, but once, once, like after the, the first week, it wasn't that. I found the first week that I wanted chips and that I wanted stuff that I normally didn't eat. But why? Because I knew I couldn't have it or I shouldn't have it if I wanted this to work. But after the first week, no, the hardest, hardest part of it all was not having my regular cup of cafe con leche, <clears throat> which I didn't learn until now about the evaporated coconut milk is not dairy. Um, so I went through a lot of trials and tribulations with my coffee, which set my mood off really bad for like the first three weeks of it. But I think that was the most difficult part. Yeah. yeah. And bloat, how'd the bloating do? How'd you do with your bloating? Well, um, I didn't have as much bloating. Um, like I said, my body had to adjust. My body's like, whoa, what the hell are you doing to me? You know, that sort of thing. Um, so I guess once my body adjusted, it, it became a little more, um, more confident in itself. So no, I didn't feel it. And I didn't have like that hunger in between. And if I did, you did so many free vegetables. I, I enjoyed my, my celery, I really did. I really became one with my celery during this. Well, I'm period. glad you said celery. I'm glad you said celery because so the the program that we were on is uh, in part and in, it also includes foods that are in, known to be anti-inflammatory, and so food in does significantly change this. It significantly um, it's a game changer for hormone balance. 
And so that's, that's like one of the things that we really want to consider because we have a few minutes left. So we want to start getting onto the things that you can do. But um, if you're finished, I just wanted to mention some uh, menopause myths. Oh, no, hold on. I, just, I had, I had um, two more. The mood changes also with it, but vaginal dryness and pain. That's where it begins before it makes the transition into menopause. Go ahead. No, did you notice vaginal dryness or pain? I, I've been menopause three years. No, but even with perimenopause, I don't. I didn't notice that with that. Oh no, vag, no, no, not at all. My total is fine. <laughs> so the menopause, but myths, and again, this this can also be included in perimenopause. Um, the hardest part about perimenopause is the transition because your hormones are coming, they're coming back to normal, and they go down and they come back to normal and they go down. You know, um, once you reach menopause, your hormone levels tend to stay on the lower end at a certain level. They don't disappear altogether, but they stay a little bit more steady and that's why women tend to have less symptoms once they reach full-blown menopause and usually a couple of years in. So again, making little changes in like your diet and your lifestyle will help transition you from perimenopause into menopause more smoothly. But 10 uh, myths on menopause, <clears throat> menopause begins at 50. Uh, menopause can start any it, it, before 50, it could start in your 40s, it could start in your 30s. Nowadays, uh, perimenopause for sure could start as early as 50. Um, it can, you, can, you can get menopause at 60. You can continue cycling. I've known women who have been cycling to their late 50s, which they weren't happy about, but uh, weight gain is, is inevitable with menopause, not true. Menopause gives you weak bones. A lot of times they, you get to take hormone replacement because uh, to prevent osteoporosis, and more and more research is showing that that is, in, in fact, not true, that you know there are other ways to strengthen your bones without taking unnecessary chemicals. And yes, you can take bioidentical chemicals, which are a little bit better than um, HRT, which is synthetic hormone replacement of, from pharmaceutical or pharmaceutical grade. But nonetheless, they still increase your risk of things like uh, heart attack, uh, breast cancer. So they, they have other risks associated with them. Um, first, uh, menopause wrecks your sex life. Not true. You know, it, it, again, it's, you know, it, take a look at yourself prior to perimenopause. If your sex life was not that great then, don't blame it on that, you know. And if you go in there, then it's going to be, a, this is also a mindset. If you say, no, this is going to be freedom. I don't have to worry about pads. I don't have to worry about getting pregnant once you're in menopause. Then, uh, then it's like freedom. It's, I think it's like, it, it makes things more exciting. Um, the first sign of menopause are hot flashes. No, I mean, there's so many things that could be the first sign of menopause or perimenopause, including fatigue, weight gain, food cravings, fuzzy thinking, forgetfulness, irritability, things, depression. Again, all things that have seen pms -y. Um, After menopause, your body doesn't produce hormones. It still does. Um, it's coming from uh, your adrenal glands, which are, they sit right on top of your kidneys. Um, the old, that just not your ovaries anymore. They don't come from there. The older you are when you get your period, the older you are when you start menopause. That's not true. In fact, studies have found that women started menstruation late actually go into menopause earlier. Uh, menopause can only cause physical symptoms. We know that that's not true. It causes mental and emotional symptoms. There's no difference between natural menopause and surgical. Um, natural menopause, so what they're talking about is when women get a hysterectomy, but they leave their bodies in. Um, the myth is there's no difference. Um, there, there's people still go through menopause. Women still go through menopause when they've had their uterus removed with so partial hysterectomy. The ovaries are still there. They'll still go through menopause. Um, the only way to get through menopause is to take hormones, and that's not true. And then, ten essential menopause facts. Um, it's not sudden. It can perimenopause can start as early as the 30s. Most people experience symptoms. Treatment is, now mind you, this, okay, the first part was coming from a naturopathic doctor who wrote an article. This part is coming from the medical side of it. Um, most people experience symptoms. Treatment is available. Menopause um, and sex, like you still have an active sex life. Body still produces hormones. Menopause uh, doesn't necessarily cause weight gain. It can. Menopause, um, is a, a stress makes it worse and stress makes perimenopause worse. Um, pregnancy is still possible during perimenopause. 
um, and menopause can be a new. Um, the one thing I would say about this is that most people experience symptoms. Do you know that the symptoms of PMS, perimenopause, and menopause are much more common in developed countries? So in in areas where there's less of uh, the, the type of foods that we eat and less stress, women don't report as a bad transition going from, you know, from their period to menopause. So that's, that becomes noticeable. So, you know, to, to a level where we have to say, okay, what we're eating is going to be problematic. Like we have to make sure that, you know, our, our lifestyle is conducive to uh, a healthier outlook, healthier mindset to prevent this. And if you start in your 30s and 20s, then it's gonna be a lot easier as you transition, but it doesn't mean because we're the ages that we are that we can't start right now, right Margie? So things that you can do to lessen your symptoms, to, first off, reduce your stress levels. Whatever way that you can do it, um, if it means just pulling yourself out of the stress, doing things that could suck, like if you know you can't pull yourself out of the stress, just pulling yourself out for brief moments or doing things that help you balance out that stress, Meditation, breathing exercises, sleep. Some women can't sleep when they're having perimenopause. Um, so if just try to find ways to help you sleep. If you get too hot, keep the room really cool. And if your significant other has a problem with that, tell them to get go sleep on the couch. Um, this is about you because it's not they don't they don't switch like we do. So, um, and we're, we're they don't do a lot. They couldn't handle much <laughs> of what we do. That's a fact. But I think also when I was going through the, the perimenopause, um, I would, wherever I was at, I couldn't just drop into a fetal position in a corner, which is what I visually saw myself doing because I had someone to take, a paralyzed individual to take care of. So he would breathe with me. So I would, so wherever I was at, I would stop. I would close my eyes and I would just breathe. I would just breathe and not think of anything, not even, not even yes. what my body, the heat my body was producing. I was like the fucking devil at that moment. And, and I would just breathe and not think of anything but breathing and breathing. And that would always, that would always help me Yes. deal with it. You know, it would bring so it simple. down as opposed so to me, to me reacting to that reaction to my body. Yes. You yep. know, so I wasn't part of the bully game. Like this Panama, PMS, perimenopause was bullying the shit out of me. And so I didn't just give into it. I, I fought it with breathing, <clears throat> with opening my jar of VIX and breathing the VIX in because eucalyptus kills germs, bacteria, the peppermint, it relaxes your brain. It does, it calms you down as well as the lavender. I totally believe in all of that. Um, Editha says, uh, when I started my period was bad, then I got my hysterectomy and they gave me hormones for six months and I never had a hot flash, never had a flash again. So five years later, took hormones for three months and I haven't had them again. So the, so the hormone replacement therapy worked really nicely for Editha. She also writes, I'm taking turmeric and they say that's good for inflammation. Absolutely is. In fact, I have it on my list. Um, turmeric is really good for that. She said, uh, I took the hormones, I cheated, it was bad, um, I couldn't stand myself. No, listen, don't apologize. It's okay if the hormones worked for you, then that's fabulous. You know, don't, don't, I don't, we don't ever want you to think that your choice is wrong. If it works, great. We just want women to know that there are choices. We don't ever want them to be bullied into doing something that they're not comfortable with because it's, quote, the, the right thing to do or this is what research shows. We want to, that was the whole point of doing this, was to empower you to know you have choices and to look at the bigger picture. You know, if it meant as simple as doing a dietary change, which isn't always so simple, but I mean, doing a dietary change not only stopped my hot flashes, it, it stopped all my other symptoms associated with my mood swings, I'm sleeping better, my, I feel better overall, and um, I like even I had a couple of weird joint things going on. I have a couple of bone spurs in my um, my thumb, uh, right at my wrist, and I noticed that's not bothering me anymore. And uh, I um, I just feel better in general because of the diet changes that I've made, you know. So, um, but that's you know that's me, and it just worked for me, and I just decided to keep going on with it. Plus, I lost weight. So, um, who else is on here? Um, 
Oh God. I, I believe that it's everybody's Akib. different. Good Ooh. morning, Akib. I think it's pronounced Akib. Good morning, Akib. I'm sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. Um, so I'm not medicinal in the least at all. Yeah. You're and what? And Iris knows that I'm not medicinal. I, I'm going to be 52 in three months. And for the first time ever, a blood work came back where my cholesterol was slightly elevated. My, my bad cholesterol. Garlic. But yeah, but then it garlic. Um, I went up and see what foods to eat. And believe it or not, since being on the chirothin and eating so healthy, um, I was telling my doctor about it. So I have to go back the end of September for another blood work to check it. Um, and I'm sure it's going to be fine because I'm not eating all the unhealthiness. I believe that every cure for every ailment we have, it is born from nature. I believe turmeric. I spread it on my salad. I, I, I literally mix it with honey and put it under my eyes for the swelling of under my eyes. I drink it when I start getting, when I feel I'm getting sick, I make my turmeric tea. Turmeric is a natural anti, it is an anti-inflammatory, but it's also a natural antibiotic, a natural antiviral, and uh, it is essential. It's just, you know, most people cannot deal with the taste. Like, my kids can't drink it, but I drink it. But they, they sell turmeric pills. I don't know how well. No, see, and I, and I don't do that. People are like, oh, they sell cinnamon pills. No, the cinnamon goes in my coffee grounds and in my coffee on top. Cinnamon is also great for a lot of things, but um, turmeric, if you buy the actual thing, which is very expensive, like ginger root, and you peel it, and you take like the tip of your finger, mush it up a little, put it in your water bottle, take a garlic clove, beat it up a little so the flavors can come out, put it in there, and rosemary. Yes, antibiotic, so the same way. Yep. Anti-inflammatory, anti um, antibiotic, anti Viral. Autoimmune. They're like bacterial for your autoimmune. And you drink, well, put it in your water bottle and drink that once for the day, every day, you're fine. Preferably, the, um, a, a native of India told me that they take the tip of a, of their finger of the actual root turmeric, they peel it and they eat it first thing in the morning before they ingest anything else. That coats and protects their stomach lining. So anyway, yeah, that also, I, I just think there's so much that God has put out there for us. Just eat a leaf. <laughs> you know what I mean? Eat a leaf. Eat a root. Um, and listen, we're almost out of time, but if you want to indulge us, because this is we still have a little bit more information to give you, so we're going to stay on just a few minutes longer if you guys are okay with yeah. that. Nancy Green said, what are other ways to get through menopause without hormones? What I think you, we were just yeah, No, I'm getting you know. there. I'm still, I'm still hey, running. Go ahead. Go ahead. I want to interrupt you. Hello, Hi, Janice. And I want to say, and hi to uh, Nan. Nan says, love the conversation this morning. Good to hear women sharing practical information to address this event in our lives. Um, and Editsa says, my ex-husband was Turkish and they use it on everything and for everything. Yes, uh, turmeric is like very, uh, uh, what is it, East Asian? Um, so I, yeah, a lot of Indian food, which I love Indian food. Um, okay, so self-care, you have to create a self-care routine. You have to do this. I don't care, it, it's gotta be daily. When people say to me, I don't practice self-care, I don't have time. Well, that's gonna catch up to you because I know I've been there. Um, you want to, you want, you can use valerian root. Valerian root tea is really good to have. Um, it is great for PMS. It's also great for perimenopause. Um, be careful. Don't take too much of it in because it can actually um, overdo it. Um, avoid soy. So this is interesting. Soy is often used as a, a treatment for perimenopause, uh, the symptoms associated with perimenopause and menopause. Um, and because it's a phytoestrogen, so it, it it mimics the estrogens that you're losing. However, you gotta be careful with soy, and this is why. You can use soy, but you have to make sure it's organic because every other soy product out there is GMO, and we actually do not really know how dangerous GMOs are. We, I'm saying that, that we don't know. So It is dangerous. You don't I have to dangerous, fucking research but what I'm it. Saying is it's that we genetically don't know modified. It's right. And we don't if, know and what they I, do, so yeah. stay away from them. No. And just about every soy product out there is GMO, just to let you know. That, is, that was one of the biggest crops to become GMO. But um, even evaluate, your diet, evaluate your diet and cut out anti-inflammatory foods, processed foods, sugar, white flour, 
uh, potentially gluten if you're sensitive to it. Plus, there's a whole list which I can give to you uh, another time. Eat foods like spinach, kale, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, bok choy, garlic, uh, onion, celery, beets, and use turmeric. And then last but not least, um, you know, there are phytoestrogens that you can take. So there are foods that have these uh, mimicking products in there. You can get a list of those things. But the big thing is stress reduction. Uh, you know, think about, make a list of things that you know help you reduce your stress. Maybe it's getting a massage. Maybe it's getting a, a pedicure. Maybe it's just going for a walk by yourself, just sitting by the beach, just sitting outside, um, watching something funny, watching something that's emotional, that lets you cry a little bit. But anything that can help you reduce your stress, it doesn't have to be with people. It can be. So maybe get together with your friends or just talking on the phone. But it could be, you know, anything. Make a list of all the things that make you happy and bring you joy. That's where it could start. And then when you look at your stress levels and say, what makes me stressed? You know, well, my family makes me stressed. Being home makes me stressed. My work makes me stressed. If you can't cut those out, then add the pieces that make you happy. So, you know, can I take five minutes to just breathe? And can I take 10 minutes to just talk to a friend of mine on the phone? And not to necessarily bitch and complain, but just talk about some great stuff. Although Margie and I use each other for both. And yesterday we were on a roll. Um, we both had some stuff out, but we felt so fabulous this morning. We both said it before we got out. We're like, oh my God, we so needed that yesterday. Um, so just make a list of the things that you can escape with, you know, stress with. Get the sleep. What else did I say, Margie? Uh, what else do you recommend? What did I say? Yes, I believe um, if you don't like beets, I think beets is so good for you. So thank you for putting that in the list. Um, I don't eat broccoli, so I eat the um, Brussels sprouts, which is all good. You know, if you're not a vegetable eater, I wasn't raised on eating vegetables. Henny says he puts that shit on everything, the turmeric. Um, I wasn't raised on vegetables. I was raised on rice, beans, and a fried meat. If you didn't have that fried chuleta, the fried chicken... You know, um, the the carne guisa, pollo guisa, then you, it wasn't dinner. So oh, vegetables, I love carne guisa, though. and if we did get vegetables, it wasn't never fresh. It was in the can. Um, so I learned it as an adult to, to expand my taste buds to that. But it, it does serve such a difference, especially with the chiral thin now, the fresh vegetables, and they do a lot for your body. So, um... I, the menopause, I would say, love yourself in the now. So if you um, love and caress your spirit, it will take care of your body. We put so much emphasis on the, on the all this menopause gain and, and it's making me this and it's making me that, that we're not looking for solutions and every problem has a solution and every woman will go through menopause. So if you're not going through it, or you don't know what to do, read on it, you know, listen to people speak about what they're going through. The menopause was confirmed to me August 6, 2017 was my last period, September 22nd, I believe. Um, no, it was in uh, the first couple of days of October. I'm in, in Bali and I go see a healer like, like Julia Roberts did in Eat, Pray, Love. Um, we were looking for that same healer. Um, and as I'm walking up to him, he points to me and he goes, oh, you're in menopause with his, you know, Indonesian broken English. And I was like, what? He goes, oh, you in menopause. And I said, yeah, I kind of figured that. But that wasn't even, that was literally like a month and a half after my last period. So then you believe the hype of the bullshit that comes with menopause instead of just doing your own research. All our bodies are different. Dr. Lori Monaco just gave some excellent tips on how you did really, because that's exactly what you do. Self care is the beginning of everything. It don't matter. We survive PMS. We survive per perimenopause and bitches. Now it's time to take control of our lives during this menopause epidemic because this too shall pass. Right? That's but right. in the meantime, don't allow your body to break down because you're not nurturing it enough 
with the things that you buy at your regular grocery store. Stop looking for the shelf um, doctors, for the medications, for what they, you know, if you can go without all that, go without it and research what, which vegetable serves as a hormone pill because they all provide something to you. I would say go the natural route if you can because it served me. I, I'm not medicinal. I don't. I seek certain things and turmeric with um um what's the, it turmeric cum, 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 I can never say the second word curcumin yes curcumin. There's capsules for that that will in the beginning it did help me a lot now I just just use the turmeric powder if I run out of the turmeric well, powder curcumin is turmeric I thought curcumin is is it is no there's there's a, a blend with it like black pepper if you add like the black pepper to the actual how do you say it turmeric turmeric um. It's it enhances it, it makes it last longer and it, for the pain as well so oh good morning to my cousin daryl and Thank good morning to sk jumped on so, yeah, I, so i don't think i really gotta add to what you said because what you said is on point a lot of it is our mind going everywhere instead of inquiring within um reduce that stress do self-care you know dance under the moon go out in the rain and just cleanse yourself it's those and, simple things and it and it is it's you know think about yourself as like don't believe the social bullshit hype like this is how it's going to be listen I, I got i'm going to post a picture soon of what the heck i look like at 30 i think i was at 38 old 37 i look a hell of a lot better than i did and i'm 50 and I'm in perimenopause. I think I look sexier. I feel sexier. I feel better. I, I mean, it is, it is an attitude. It is, uh, yes, hormones do play a role and you can't always control things. Mm -hmm. You know, if you honor yourself and you say to yourself, okay, I'm going to either buy into this or I'm going to do what, it's, what I need to do for myself. I'm going to practice self-care. I don't care what anybody around me says. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to eat better. I'm going to exercise and I'm going to, I'm just going to be amazing and I'm going to be effing sexy and, or what's the expression sexy as fuck, right? Um, and if you, you decide that age is just age, menopause is just menopause, it's a part of the cycle and you're not going to be sitting, rocking on a chair on a front porch with your hair all cut short and gray because that's what you're supposed to do after a certain age. You know, you, you have to decide that, okay, you know what? Menopause is a new beginning, like I said in that little article at the end. And I'm going to start my life. This is the second half. And what's that chapter going to look like in this part of the book? You know? Absolutely. You're in control. You're not raising children anymore. You know? So well, I am. Are, you and, set I, oh, well, <laughs> and I think that, you know, I think this is the second chapter of your life. So live it well. Yes. And with that, with any ailment that you have, I would tell you, have faith in God. And every day wake up with hope that you're going to be better today. Because with everything going on, there's a lot of mental distress going on that's affecting your body. So I know we're going a little bit over. But all I want to say is wake up with hope in your soul and faith in your heart. And knowing that you will learn something better for your well-being because if you made it this far there's a purpose for you to be here because i know a lot of us have been through hell and back have looked the devil in the eye and said not today satan and we kept on drudging with our torn clothes barefoot heartbroken and tears streaming down our eyes and we're here today so what i tell you is nurture your spirit and embrace the body you're in because we all been through changes and as you start doing that, which is what I did when I started the chiral thing with Lori, when you embrace that, when you, when you nurture your spirit enough to know that it is love, regardless of what the outside looks like, the spirit starts to help you take care of that. And, you and, if, you need a, and if you need assistance in this, remember, you know, Margie and I are both life coaches and we can help you. We could coach you through this. Um, just a mindset change, just just stepping into your greatness finally. So you can reach out to us and set up an appointment. I mean, this is it's not just about this conversation here. You can literally work one-on-one -on -one with us or do group coaching with us. Um, if you are interested in losing weight, I've got a Chirothin uh, group starting on August 22nd, and you would need to register by August 19th. This stuff really, really works. I mean, in six weeks, you can lose 20 pounds um, or more. 
you know, and so these are, there, there are, there's always choices. You do not have to just jump into what is considered normal for my age as a woman going through perimenopause, menopause or whatever, just make a choice for yourself and actually choose you. And with that, our conversation on Thursday is going to be, what is age? We're going to have a guy's perspective. So we're going to talk to, to Ephraim who, and as much fun as we have with Ephraim and the, and the, you know, the, the little sexual conversations that we have with him. The great thing about having Ephraim on is the fact that Ephraim is in better shape now than he's ever been. Even when he was younger, he said this, he just turned, I believe 56, he said yesterday. Yes, 56. And, uh, and he looks better. When it, he, and so he's showing that you can defy age too. So a lot of men think after a certain age, testosterone starts to go down and then that's it. And he's proving, as a lot of men are, that age is just a number. And that's what we're going to talk to you about today too. I think both Margie and I feel that even though our lives are still working towards where we want to be, both of us can admit that we both love ourselves, we're happy, we are feel good about our age, and it is just a number. So it is just a number. I want to say good morning to my brother, Mickey. Good morning, my beautiful brother. Good morning, And yeah, Mickey. Carmen says, um, thank you so much for your information. It was awesome today. Bless you both. And um, Share, 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 share. She said, uh, yeah, so she said it was very informative. And it is. So you share it forward and just know she... It, Lori just said something about choices, and it is. It's your choice to live your best life at any age during PMS, perimenopause, or menopause. The, the power is always in your hand, your hand for you. So make the choice to live your best life. And if you have not lived your best life yet at your age, shit, you better start doing it now. Like, that's it. Like, I didn't and now my best life when I was in my 20s and 30s and 40s to mid 40s and now that's that's done and over with so it's not too late i don't care if you have perimenopause or menopause and you're over a certain age for god's sakes just do it because it is you still have so much life left in you so with that we will talk to come back on thursday because we are going to be talking about it. share this video because this video is really really women need to hear this so please please share this because it's got great information and anybody who needs more information whether it's diet changes suggestions they can contact us directly they can they, we can give them the information that we looked up and researched anyway so we can share that more so because there was still lots of stuff that margie and i did not share because we just ran out of time yeah so with that right Marge. so um definitely reach out to us and share 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 because we're i'm tired of this i'm tired of hearing this conversation that we just put ourselves because of our hormones. Myth. It's myth, yeah. And it's yep. like Lori said, you know what? At the end of the day, make a wise choice and choose you. Yes. And everything yes. that falls under that. And make that umbrella rain inside. Feel every drop and recognize you are the most important person in your world. So do everything possible to be healthy, body, mind, and spirit. And that, we say goodbye, Lori. And remember, we'll see you Thursday and be you, be real, and be extraordinary. See you Thursday and what is age? This is my favorite age. So see you Thursday. Remember, breathe in the beauty, breathe out the beauty, the bullshit. Namaste. Bye, everybody. Thanks for coming on.